Now, Arnie Gunderson, a nuclear engineer and a chief engineer with the consulting group Fairwinds Associates. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Hi, thanks for having me. We uh, keep seeing these developments change. Um, they, they, uh, the, the latest news that came in about an hour ago was that emergency crews actually temporarily withdrew the water cannons after they detected higher than uh, acceptable radiation levels. Um, what is your assessment of uh, where we are today on this crisis? Well, this is not something you put out like a traditional fire. Um, whatever water gets onto that nuclear reactor has to be sustained for months, if not years. Um, what, what's pushing the firemen back is the radiation that's coming from the spent fuel pool. And it's like a, um, a they're called gamma rays, but it's a, a very high powered x-ray. And without the water in that fuel pool, there's two things. One, it's not being cooled, mm -hmm. but two, it's not being shielded. And so there's a, an awful lot of gamma rays flooding that site, mm -hmm. which is gonna force the workers to, uh, to stay further away. Which is why we think also that um, the, the water cannons now, we're, we're monitoring a press conference, the water cannons now have been, have stopped, they've stopped the water cannons using the water on the, on the facility and, and they say that they're not going to resume that and, and it may be because of those gamma rays in that, that would make it very, very toxic, that area. Right, you know, you see these guys with the bubble suit mm -hmm. um, and that's protecting them from the airborne contamination. But those gamma rays are external to their body. It's like being in an x-ray machine. It's passing right through that bubble suit, and there's only a limited amount of stay time that they can be in the area. So what does that mean for the 180 workers? There have been differing uh, opinions uh, about what is going to happen to those that are cycling through as they desperately try to you know, avert uh, an even bigger nuclear crisis for their country. Well, the rule of thumb is that 250 rem of radiation will definitely give you cancer. So if 100 people get 2.5 rem, somebody in that 100 is going to get cancer. These guys are probably getting 10, mil 10 rem, which means that four out of every 100 will get cancer. It's not that they're on a suicide mission and will die immediately, but uh, in the remainder of their life, they've increased the likelihood of cancer by, by a lot. It's probably clear that they know the risks as well here. I mean, these are people who work in the nuclear industry. What are the, um, what are the lessons, if any, for the United States? I mean, we've just been showing where there are uh, facilities in the United States that are of the same age, although many nuclear experts have told us the age of the facility, it, as long as it's kept up properly mm -hmm. and there isn't an earthquake, it is, is it in good shape? Angela Merkel um, in Germany, she said that they are going to be uh, reviewing their older facilities and would not be extending the life of some of their older facilities. What should the United States do? You know, these old plants don't meet current standards. They're nowhere near as robust as a plant built in the 80s or 90s. So, um, you know, Ch uh, Chancellor Merkel uh, decided that the eight plants designed in the 70s should have another look at. Now, I was an engineer in the 70s when this plant was being built, and we didn't have pocket calculators. We did these on a slide roll. Um, so we really need to look at um, the calculations and the design bases. How, how severe did we really think Mother Nature was going to throw something at us? You know, the United States, though, we rely on this energy. I mean, you look at Vermont, 72% of, uh, of, uh, of their electricity generation comes from nuclear power. New Jersey, uh, more than half. Connecticut, more than half. South Carolina, more than half. Um, you know, can, can the United States afford to sideline any of these facilities here in the U.S.? Uh, well, first off, the Vermont Yankee number is not, not correct, but uh, the, the, you know, this is the time of year uh, where we can afford to shut them down for a period of time until we analyze it. The load growth in the spring and fall is very low. There's not air conditioning, there's not heating. And after Three Mile Island, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, shut down all of the plants of a similar design for several months until they went back through and, uh, and, and took a hard look at them. There's 23 units in this category, and um, in the spring and fall, it's, a, it's an okay time. There's enough load to, um, to shut them down and take a good look at them before the summer peak arrives. Uh, right. just, one other, just one other quick question. They're trying to get power up and running again so they can continue to put, you know, get the water pumps back up and working again. Is that when, when this ends? Um, it doesn't end. That heat is going to go on for years, but 
um, if they can, if the pipes have retained their integrity, they'll pump water onto this core, but the containments are cracked. So the water will cool the core, but it will also create steam. The steam is gonna carry out radiation. Less radiation than right now, but it's gonna carry out radiation for months. All right, Arnie Gunderson, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. The uh, chief engineer with Fairwinds Associates. Um,